so much I wanted to ask you. But for some reason, I'm not interested in asking those questions right now. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 It's been nearly four years and I have nothing but questions. Hey everyone, it's Anenkipu again. Welcome back to my channel. Today, the new version of Genshin Impact 4.7 was released, and in its own fashion, the long-awaited chapter of the main story quest only raised more questions. Are some of the five sinners siding with the Fatui? If not Clotar or Kyber, who are the other surviving Alberics that Kaya could be related to? When will Paimon be awakened? At the same time, compared to all the lore dumping we got from Fontaine Arkan Quest and Remuria Chronicles, today we got just a tiny bit of information that made certain popular theories no longer credible. So I present to you top 5 theories that the new Arkan Quest bedtime story confirmed or debunked. Starting with not a misconception, but the old lore reality we lived in. Rhine Daughter was responsible for the Cataclysm. For the longest time, it was the only version of the events we knew, but now we got five names of the sinners who are to blame for Conria's downfall, and some of them we have heard before. Roptatir, the Vice, Vedrfölnir, the Visionary, Reindotir, Gold, Surtalogi, the Foul, and Riri, Teher of Selneri. Together with Daneslave, these were six talented people in the nation of Conria who were supposed to protect the nation, but instead the five sinners followed the abyss and got a power that can destroy the entire world. Daneslave, on the other hand, had sworn to take revenge. This information also finally ties Conria and the abyss order together in their current state and goals, as since the beginning of the game it wasn't explicitly stated how the two are connected and even after Karabert's quest, we only knew Clotar Alberic established the order, but most living Conria natives were painted as victims of the Cataclysm and Archon's anger. While still on the topic of the Great Nation, let's discuss another popular theory we were wrong to believe. Kaya Alberic is not Karaber or a descendant of Karaber. We finally witnessed the end of at least one story in this game, so this time we can be sure. In his own words, Karibert stopped existing physically at the age of eight. The appearance he takes is the result of his imagination, based on the memories about his dead. His remaining consciousness was used as an instrument in creating the loom of fate. Any chance that living was stripped away from me when I was eight years old? My consciousness left to mature in an illusory world of nothingness. Even the form you see before you was... Nothing but an invention based on my father's appearance. An imagined version of what I would look like if I had the chance to grow up. We also know what the Loom of Fate is now. An instrument capable of creating and changing the ley lines and with them the memories and perhaps the reality of this world. Theory number three. Celeste is empty and all the heavenly principles are here. Well, more like Celestia is just empty. This is a long speculated theory in the community that finally got confirmed. There would be no consequences for what the Hydra Archon did. The world of Tewat we are in right now is not the same because the higher gods or god that used to create its laws have been sleeping for 500 years. We do not know yet when it will be awakened or what exactly would trigger it, but the Loom of Fate is being prepared for that exact moment. But there's still time before the heavenly principles awaken. Yes, for 500 years now, ever since the cataclysm in Conria, there's been no sign of activity. Not long ago, you witnessed the Hydro Archon destroy her divine throne. Yes, such a flagrant disregard for the rules, and still Celestia took no action. I suppose that's proof enough of the Heavenly Principles situation. However, the Heavenly Principles will awaken. We just don't know when that will be, or what might trigger it. Let us talk about the Loom of Fate now. 
It is not a theory, but more of a lore development that we got. Previously, we only knew that it was a plan that the Abyss Order was preparing for. Now, thanks to Karabert, we learned the following. Extreme sorrow and pain. Hope and regret coursing through your veins. And a degree of abyssal power that defies comprehension. Father told me that once I possessed all those elements, I would become the loom of fate. But despite his intentions for me, I never truly became the loom of fate. I was merely used as a means for its construction. The loom of fate is a device capable of weaving ley lines. In its primitive form, it can only be used to create and implant memories. But as more of it is completed, its power becomes stronger and stronger, until finally, it has the power to weave real ley lines of its own. Once fully completed, the moment it gains the power to weave ley lines, it loses the lower level ability to influence memories. But it also becomes a tool that can change the entire world. If the extreme sorrow and regret in combination with the power of the Abyss are the conditions to become the Loom of Fate, it is a huge game changer, because we know that the Fatui are preparing something as well. For some reason, they are collecting the remains of the gods and, if you know what happens when you consume god's remains, they might be creating their own version of the Loom of Fate. And last but not least, the Evil Twin. I'll let y'all watch the clip first. At the end of my journey, I arrived at a place known as the Sea of Flowers at the end. Do you remember? A long time ago, when we traveled between worlds together, you told me you wanted to find a place in the universe where that one flower was in full bloom. To have a place like that suddenly appear before me? Well, would you think of that as a coincidence? You mean... I miss you too, Lumine. But as this war continues to rage, and as I continue to seek that final answer, I don't even know how to face myself sometimes. Let alone my own sister. Honestly, many theories I've heard or thought about myself that could have explained why we're separated with our sibling and how come they keep avoiding us now seem far more creative than this half answer given by the developers before it seemed to be a moral conflict of the abyss twin some sort of debt they have to deal with before we can continue our adventure looking at this photo and listening to the conversation lumine and ether shared it is now clear that in the end there is an inner disagreement between the twins Alright everyone, that was a lot. What is your new favorite lore piece in the game now? Mine is surely the Sea of Flowers at the end. I know it's definitely the Sea of Entevats, and they only bloom in Conria. So, how did Lumine get this flower while traveling in other worlds? I can't wait to learn more. Thank you for watching today's video, consider subscribing to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.